so I'm going to pull up our IB agenda for this evening. So our IB overview will include what exactly is IB? We use a lot of acronyms at Great River School. Uh, what makes our program unique? What are the program options and the pathways students can take? And we're going to hear from alums at 810, some of whom chose the diploma path, which I'll talk about, and some of which chose a non-diploma path, uh, our IB for All program. So we will hear back from them around 810 tonight. I was doing a time check. Uh, this is a really big slide deck with a lot of slides. This is going to be sent to you as a PDF after this presentation. And so I might just be skipping some of the more in-depth slides for you to look back at later. Here's our process with all of the grade 10 students at Great River School. So we have our IB Info Night, which you're attending tonight. In March, we encourage all of our 10th grade students to talk to their guides about uh, the different options at Great River and think about what might be their best fit. On Friday, March 29th, all students will hear from our seniors about, uh, there'll be some student seniors panelists that did PSEO, some panelists that did the IB Diploma Program, and some panelists that did the IB for All Program, uh, so the non-IB uh, DP pathway. And they're going to present to all of our 10th graders at community meeting in a student-led panel. On Friday, April 5th, every single 10th grader needs to have submitted their IB planning form. It just asks, what path are you choosing for 11th grade? And uh, also uh, gets their choice of science, their Spanish path, and their elective path. And again, that will be due the April before uh, spring break. For students who registered for the diploma at that point, we're gonna review all the applications and we'll contact you if we have any concerns. And then June, all 10th graders will do their general ed uh, GRS course signups for their 11th grade year. So first, acronyms. We use them a lot at Great River School. What is IB? Uh, we love the partnership of Montessori and IB. I have the IB mission statement here because both the Great River School mission and the IB mission are so centered in um, creating and building communities and students who are peacemakers. And so you see some key words in both responsible and engaged citizens of the world, uh, better and more peaceful worlds through intercultural intercultural understanding and respect. The IB stands for International Baccalaureate, and it is a very holistic, global-minded mind, uh, curriculum. It was originally started way back when uh, in order to create an international passport for students. So students whose families traveled around the world, they could go to an IB school in France and be sitting in, for instance, IB Global Politics, and then their family could move to a different country and attend a different IB school, but experience the same curriculum. And so what's cool about this is students sitting in St. Paul, Minnesota at Great River School taking IB Global Politics are engaged in the same curriculum as students at different IB schools all over the world. So students sitting in a classroom in Brazil, students sitting in a classroom somewhere in Europe, students sitting in a classroom in Japan. I think that's a really cool part about uh, the IB, the International Baccalaureate. Like Montessori philosophy, a lot of, is expected of students. Uh, it is a very rigorous program. And because of that, it's a credential recognized by universities around the world. So if a student graduates with um, IB Global Politics under their belt, a lot of universities will say, hey, we'll give you some college credit as part of that experience, especially uh, our students who register for IB exams. There's some more in-depth uh, language on how Great River and IB uh, support each other, if you want to go back and read that. I got this question today from one of my 10th graders that I was talking to, and they asked, I heard a, I've heard a lot about AP at a lot of St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minneapolis schools and many American schools. I haven't heard a lot about IB. So what's the difference between advanced placement and IB? 
they do have a lot of similarities in that they're both really rigorous curriculums and they're both recognized by colleges and universities around the world. They both have the potential for college credit. Where I see IB as different is in their mission. So IB, uh, from my point of view, is a more holistic curriculum that really approaches from the liberal arts perspective. So in-depth academics, but also components like creativity, activity, and service. Components like theory of knowledge, which is a really cool philosophy kind of course. Uh, a curriculum that's more globally focused. Uh, courses designed to be two years so students can really go in depth. And I think one of the biggest differences is oftentimes AP exams are multiple choice exams, whereas IB exams are things that students do throughout their two years. So we end up submitting uh, projects and labs that they do in the sciences and explorations and oral presentations, all that count towards that final exam score. They do sit exams at the end of their two years if they choose to, but that's a big difference in what counts towards uh, the final score. You can learn more about IB at IBO.org. A lot of good literature there. Uh, but I want to talk a minute about how IB at Great River School is pretty unique. Uh, all of our 11th and 12th grade students do IB at Great River. We're an IB for all school, which is pretty rare in the world of IB. It will be their last two years of high school. So 11th and 12th grade, all two year courses. And I'm going to talk tonight about the two pathways open to our 11th and 12th grade students. One is our orange pathway, IB for all, which will be a mixture of IB core and GRS electives. And the second is a very rigorous IB diploma program. From what we know, we're the only school in Minnesota where all 11th grade students that are traditional students at Great River are in the same classrooms. So we're not an IB school that's a school within a school where only the IB students travel together throughout their schedule. So all of our 11th grade, uh, grade students that are traditional students will be enrolled in IB literature, IB math, IB global politics, and IB science. And we think this has so many benefits to bringing diverse perspectives to the classroom, uh, getting to know all of your classmates versus just a few in a particular cohort, and also keeping doors open to students who might not see themselves as a rigorous course taker when they enter 11th grade but then experience that and say, hey, wait a second, like I worked really hard in Ivy Literature HL. I actually wanna take the exam for college credit now that I've experienced that. There's no admissions requirement, which is again, rare right now in the Ivy world for, I don't think that's a good thing. I think it's pretty cool like Great River that we don't have admissions requirements. And our flexible schedule, being a cool Montessori school that does have a flexible schedule, it allows us to put more intervention supports um, and cool IB diploma advisories um, and wellness checks into our schedule. So those are some ways that make us unique compared to other IB schools around the world. What are my program options? So let's look a little more in depth at those orange and blue paths. So IB for all or IB diploma. If you're a 10th grade student who says, I want to be in the most rigorous academic program that's known for high school students. You want to take the blue path, the IB diploma path. You're going to have your schedule set to seven courses. They're all going to be IB courses, so all college level courses. Three of them are going to be what we deem higher level. So that is like your more advanced IB courses. And three of them are going to be standard level. So we use acronyms of HL and SL, you'll see on the transcript. You'll also be enrolled in that philosophy course called Theory of Knowledge. As part of the diploma in your 11th grade spring, you will get to pick your own research project and that will result in a 4,000 word essay called the Extended Essay. You get to work one-on-one -on -one with a mentor on that research project of your choice. While all students at Great River engage in creativity, activity, and service on Wednesday afternoons, there are some small extra requirements for diploma students. Uh, three informal interviews throughout your three years is something special that you all would do. 
Um, and I'll just note for everyone, you notice it's a really full schedule. So doing the diploma program makes it really difficult to take any extra electives. We do have diploma students who uh, are also in choir. It just makes it for a very, very packed um, schedule. If you're like, eh, I don't know if I wanna do the most rigorous IB path, the IB diploma, I'm thinking that I want a little more flexibility in my schedule and uh, opportunity to explore my passions more in depth. You might choose the orange path, IB for all. What that means is you get to be in the IB classrooms with all of the 11th and 12th graders in your course. So IB Lit, IB Math, IB Science, IB Globo. But you get to choose the rest of your schedule. You could choose to take other IB classes, but you don't have to. You could take film studies. You could take ceramics. You could take musicianship. You could take another non-IB science like chemistry or physics. So it's just allow that orange path allows for a lot more flexibility but something to note, you could still choose to take your IB exams for college credit, whether you do the orange path or that blue path. So you absolutely, even if you don't do the diploma, you could say, I would like to take the IB literature HL exam. And you take that exam at the end of your senior year, you do great. And maybe the university or college you go to awards you college credit for that course. Oftentimes people kind of dig into the diploma and they're like, wait, Lindsay, but how do I actually get like the yes at the end of my two years of you earn the diploma? We send in all of your exams, all of your projects, send them over to IBO and they actually grade them all. And then they send back your report, uh, their special report card for you. And if you earned 24 points total, you get your IB diploma. So if you think of it like a great river school report card, scale one through seven, each subject is seven points. So six subjects times seven. So there's 42 possible points. And then TOK and EE have bonus points of zero to three. And somewhere in there, you need to earn 24 points. Or if you think of it a different way, it would be you need to get a four on average in each of your six courses. So that's another way of thinking about that. Here are some college credit examples. What you're looking at here, let me orient you. We have some colleges that have been pretty popular in the last couple of years that our seniors have graduated and gone on to. You have our IB courses listed across here and you have exam scores listed in this chart. So for instance, if you were interested in going to the University of Minnesota, and you took the IB literature HL exam at the end of your senior year, and you got a five on it, the University of Minnesota would award you college credit for getting a five on your IB exam in IB literature HL. So that's how you can read that chart. It's also really easy to Google. So like if you're interested in going to McAllister, for instance, you could type into Google McAllister IB college credit. And they have a sub page that shows you all the things they award for IB um, exams. If you choose that blue path, that IB diploma path, I will note that there's some bonus points rewarded to certain schools. So for instance, at Pitzer College out in California, they not only award college credit for each of these exams, but they also uh, give bonus credit if you earned your IB diploma. So something also to just note and realize is sometimes colleges offer bonus credit because they know the IB diploma is a really rigorous and hard program. If you wanna do some in-depth reading on like the research out there, we know that there are some studies uh, talking about the benefits of the IB diploma program and most of them are surrounding college readiness. And so uh, our alums report back to us that they're like, oh my gosh, when I got to college, my muscles felt so strong as a result of doing this really hard program in a very supportive network. So there's some different uh, points of research that I have linked in this PDF. I also linked a video from uh, the admissions office in Princeton talking about how college admissions views the IB diploma if you want a little more um, literature.
I'll also say that I got to talk to all of your 10th grade students in their math class this week. And so they heard from me their course choices. But if you also would like to sit down with them and talk to them about each of the courses they're picking, all of that information is here. Uh, so IB math choices, IB science choices, IB elective choices are all there for uh, folks to look at. And lastly, that IB Spanish, whether or not to continue or not. And so the students heard from me on each of these choices. But again, if you want to look more in depth on uh, the choices your students will be making, that literature is in this PDF, and I'm happy to answer questions on it. So how do you decide as a student what route might be best for you? So remember, you're thinking about, am I going to take that orange path of the IB for All program, the mixture of IB courses and GRS electives? Or am I going to engage in the IB Diploma program? And I also want to, uh, as we preview this panel, we're going to hear back from alums and seniors. They're also going to speak to their IB music experience, their IB theater experience, or their IB visual arts experience, and share a little bit about those courses and what surprised them or stood out to them or something you should think about as you're thinking about uh, your elective options. So let's hear from some alums on this decision between IB for All and the IB Diploma and some of these IB elective courses. So let me just stop our screen share here and look for some alums in our uh, attendance list. So Lucas, I have promoted you. Joseph, I have promoted you. Jackie, I am promoting you. Elsie, I am promoting you. Elise is here. So I notice we have one alum so far and then three or four current seniors. And I have two alums. Anthony, I see you. I'm promoting you to panelist. I think I got all of our panelists, but if you're a panelist out there and I didn't promote you, just put a little note in the Q&A and I'll watch that. Hi everyone, hi alums, hi current seniors. Thank you for joining us at uh, on a late evening, at least late for me, my bedtime is usually 8.30. So I appreciate you all being here. I know all of you have different experiences. Some of you did not do the diploma path. Some of you did do the IB diploma path. Some of you are in different IB electives. Um, so we wanna hear from you. Um, I think I'm gonna start with IB theater folks, then go to IB visual arts and then go to IB music. And I will call on you to just chat about it and I wanna, hear either what surprised you most about that course or uh, your favorite project from the course. Or if you want to give like a little bit of background about the course. So I think Jackie, if you're willing to give a little bit of background about IB Theater, just brief. And then I'm going to hear from Joseph on what surprised him or a favorite project from IB Theater an overview I believe I'm sorry I'm also in a car yeah. currently a moving car you're doing um, great, Peggy. <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> anyways um IB theater is kind of it's it's super interesting in how it like challenges everyone to be step into the shoes of like what every position in theater essentially like a tech hand an actor a director a writer like um, and it kind of does this through like a lot of writing assessments, but also research presentation, but also like hands-on theater work. So I'm moving out of the car now. Anyhow, um, yeah, that is what IB Theater is all about. And it's super awesome. Over to you, Joseph. What is a favorite project or what surprised you most in IB Theater? Yeah, um, I, um, as far as my favorite project, um, I really liked, um, I really liked, there's a, um, uh, it's not a direct, it's not called the director's notebook anymore, but it's the same type of like, uh, project where you write a, um, like a, 
uh, it's a production proposal about um a like a uh, play or a musical that you really like and that was a that was a really nice uh plan opportunity for me to like explore a uh like dramatic text more in depth as far as what surprised me um i will say that there is uh when i like first signed up for ib theater i i was expecting a lot more like opportunities to get like really hands-on with like acting in theater and i will say that it is like very project focused um in a way that a lot of other um uh ib courses aren't like um every day uh during ib or almost every day you are like in class working on a project um which i do think is you know it's, it's really cool carolyn provides you with a lot of indie work opportunities um and you get to learn um a lot of really handy research skills um i will say if you're looking for um something I, I personally have found that like um, the skills that I've learned from um, IB theater, as far as like, um, like uh, how I can use like theater in my, my life after high school um, have been, um, I don't know. I, I, I might like to, um, I don't think that IB theater has been um, very uh, meaningful for me in that way, but um, Elsie, I'm interested in hearing from you as well as someone who also took IB theater, if that has been helpful in your in your life after college. Um, but yeah, I uh, I personally have found that like the um, research skills that I've learned and writing skills I've learned in IB theater have been really nice, but I might have liked to do something that um, let me get a little bit more experience with like another artistic um, um, avenue, like maybe IB musical. That totally makes sense. And I think that transitions nicely, Joseph, into um Elise and I are gonna talk a little bit about IB visual art and so Elise you're my only rep for IB visual art so we're gonna do this together um I'm gonna actually speak to something I heard Tony Favorito who graduated in 2021 and is out at Rochester Institute of Design say uh he was one of our panelists a couple of years ago and he said I didn't do the full diploma because I knew I wanted to go to art school and I really wanted to spend my energy, I mean, kind of to Joseph's point, like focusing on this thing that I knew was going to help me in my future and be directly tied to it technically. And so he said, it's honestly like he said, it's the best decision I ever made in my life. And it stretched me so much because I created a lot of art, which I expected to. But he also said he he was so surprised at the amount of writing and like you're doing reflections, in-depth reflections, in-depth sharing of processes. And I guess like one of my questions to you, cause I haven't been in the class, but is it like 50, 50, is it 50% creating art, 50% writing about it? And can you share some of your experiences in IB art? Yeah. Um, it, it's generally 50, 50, I would say it's more so, um, if you're actually willing to put a good job into your writing then it is a 50 50. um but sometimes it's like it's due today i just need to write a quick little description and submit it so it's on time um but to like actually do good work it is really a 50 50. um you i've done like a lot of work for it uh in your junior year there's a lot more note taking and learning techniques and in senior year it's pretty much just go make art and every two weeks you'll have a deadline <laughs> do you have a favorite project that you're willing to share <sighs> from ib visual arts so to people who don't know me i do historical sewing i spent four months on a project good for you are you proud <laughs> of it like it turned out okay it turned it's turned out great. I finally it finished be at the it. IB art show next week. It will be at the IB art show with it's almost done jack matching jacket. Great. It's gonna uh, be so great. shout out to the IB art show, 4 30 p.m. next week, and also stays on in the performance space to, throughout conferences. So come stop yeah. on by. And that's another good way to find out what IB Visual Arts is all about. Over and to on our Oh, yep. Go ahead. On, on that note of having deadlines every two weeks, when last year I got a lot of really great help from like advice from the seniors and they were like, over the summer, make as much art as you can because you can use that for your deadlines in school if you miss one. So I've had so much work from over the summer that I did that I've been able to submit and write little blurbs about so that I can do these really big projects. 
That's really cool. And if you're thinking about doing IBR, 10th graders out there, ask to see some of the 11th and 12th grade sketchbooks, because that's a really great way to see like what they're up to, what we mean by sharing process and reflection throughout. And they're just very aesthetically pleasing. Like I'm so impressed whenever I see an IB visual art sketchbook. I have so many um, loose notes in mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, over to our IB music folks. So Lucas will hear from you first of like a brief uh, intro to what IB music's all about. And then I'm going to go to Anthony and ask him to just briefly tell us one of his favorite projects that he did in IB music or something he really enjoyed in IB music. So Lucas, could you start us off? Yeah, for sure. Uh, sorry, my camera's not working, but um, IB music, we do a lot of... Uh... So first off, I guess I'll talk about like what we do in class. So we do we do a lot of exploring like global music, like in context and finding a lot about like different cultural like perspectives and how they're like weaved into music. And then we will often do like a lot of like our homework will be focused on like doing research and like trying to replicate or like kind of try to capture aspects of the sound that we hear like in these different like global contexts which is often what most of our projects are made up of. And then out of that work, we create like portfolios and we write a lot about like what we do. But also in class, a lot we do sometimes just do experiments with like actual like physical like instruments, which is always very fun. And also like when we're not doing like all the big IB broad project stuff, we're often rehearsing for the IB music concert, which is usually in May. So we do a lot of just like different songs that we all enjoy playing and then we play for the broader community. So, yeah. Thanks, Lucas. And over to Anthony. Anthony, is there something that you, a favorite project or something you really enjoyed about IB Music? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, as Lucas was saying, uh, you're like constantly working on different projects with uh especially like exploring music from different cultures around the world um one of the projects that i had quite a bit of trouble with but was also still a lot of fun was the contemporary music maker project that is a project that all the seniors do and it it can be it can be very difficult at times uh one of the main challenges for me at least was trying to find a student who'd be able to do that with me uh because i knew i wanted to do something with another musician but by the time i started talking with the other musicians in Ivy Music itself. They'd already partnered up with other people. So I actually ended up partnering up with one of the musicianship students instead. Um and And is that it, like creating music together? Yeah. Um for the project that I did it, it was like semi-improvisation but also kind of based off of like this general pattern that we'd come up with when we were hanging out one time and it it was kind of tricky figuring it, everything out but it was it was a learning process and we made it through I feel like that is a common lesson in any IB elective and in whatever IB path you choose. So Anthony, thank you so much for like sharing that experience and sharing a little bit about making music with a contemporary music maker in IB music. And so we heard about those three electives and maybe Elsie, you can speak to Joseph's question on IB theater, but you're kind of our representative from the other side of Great River School of someone who did the diploma and is now like experiencing either the payoff or not the payoff of having made it through the diploma at Great River School. And then Elise, I want to go back to you because you're a good representative of someone who chose not to do the diploma. And I want to hear your reflection at the end of your senior year about like why that was the right decision for you. 
um, and how you're feeling about that at the end of your senior year. So we can hear both perspectives. Um, so uh, Elsie, can we hear from you? How is Carlton going and how do you see the diploma paying off, not paying off? And I, like I told you in my email, like be honest and I'm serious on that. Like be honest from your perspective at Carlton. First of all, I'm loving this Elsie and Lee flip off. It's quite funny. Um, so at first to speak to Joseph's question. So um, IB itself changed the theater curriculum between, so I graduated in 2023. So I am a freshman at Carlton College and the IB organization itself changed the theater curriculum. So I had all different assessments than the current seniors do. And my assessments were more based in the actual theater making. And I think we're less research-based than the current seniors have, which is unfortunate. And so I think that I did, I did have a different experience. I'm not sure I can speak to that as accurately as like you would be able to, because I have had more experience to that. But I have definitely been using my IV skills at Carleton. So one thing I think that honestly that IV taught me the most was to be very decisive and being able to initiate these really big open-ended projects. Uh, going to a small liberal arts school, I have had to do a lot of open-ended projects who so were just given a big prompt and you have to pick something and write 10 pages on it and <laughs> commit to it. And so having a lot of experience writing those papers, I think really prepared me for success in all of my classes because I had to write a big paper for every single subject that has now prepared me for college writing. So I took a biology lab in my fall term and I was able to write a lab report very easily because I took IBSCHS and so I had written a ton of lab reports and I'm taking a maritime history course right now and all of my exams have followed the exact format of the IB GLOPO exams and so it's really great um, okay I first of all can we pause it. it is so cool that you're in a maritime history course first of all that's, that's really cool. awesome and I'm glad that IB Global Politics is paying off how it has in my grade is beautiful thanks to Anu um and I think just another thing about IB was the time management that you had to get through because another thing with college and especially like so Carlton is on trimester so we have 10 weeks per term and most courses that I have taken so far have had a really big project that spans over the 10 weeks which marks or it follows kind of the structure of the extended essay and all the IAs and knowing how to have a big project that is really long and you're supposed to complete over a long period of time has really helped me in college because then when I get these long projects, I know how to space it out. So a lot of my college peers are leaving it all to the end and then they hit 10th week and they're like, they have tests in every class and oh no, I haven't done my project that was assigned eight weeks ago. But like, because I've had all this experience doing long-term projects, I feel really prepared for that. And I also just, I feel prepared for the rigor that Carleton has as a very academic school. And I've been feeling very successful. So that's one perspective. And that's an IB diploma student reporting back from college. Elise, oh my gosh, that's Elsie Elise. Uh, Elise, you're one of our reps who did not do the diploma. Why was that the right decision for you? So for me, the main decision of why I decided not to do the diploma was ultimately, I really just, Spanish was really draining for me. And I did not see that as being like a sustainable thing I could do and not be constantly worried and looming over my head about. Um, so I chose not to do the diploma because then I didn't need I didn't need to keep doing Spanish. So I did, that was a thing I could take off my plate and not be stressed about. And that has allowed me to have some really interesting experiences with being able to take both IB art and then an elective as well. And last year I got put on like theater design for the entire year. And I just, it was great. It was nice. Um, I got to work on projects that I found interesting. And then like this year, I've done an additional class of painting, which is just a nice fun thing, which is a break from like 
go write, read an entire book and take notes on the entire book. Um, so it's been not doing the diploma and specifically, I'm doing all of my other IB classes. I'm going to be testing in all of them, but without having Spanish that I haven't had to do. Ultimately, the difference from me to my understanding is I'm not doing IB Spanish. I'm not doing uh, TOK and I haven't done an extended essay. And those are like the three main differences that I've known. And for me, at least, as stated, that's allowed me a lot more freedom. Um, and like kind of going back to what Ellie said about the time management, uh, Great River got really good at making me use a physical planner. It works great. I have all of my um, due dates. Busy, both of them busy IB students and both of them got some time management lessons out of that. LC, I see your hand up. Did you have one more thing to add on the payoff of the diploma? Yeah, I have a quick thing. So also like going off of what Elise said about Spanish, IB tested me. I only had to take one I've only had to take one term of Spanish rather than having to take five. So I tested out of a year and a half worth of Spanish courses at Carleton because of my IB score. And so that has been wonderful because it's opened up like six credits where I can take something else. So that is one advantage. Although, yes, I agree that it is really good and classes can be very draining. Um, but also one thing, please, no matter if you take the diploma or if you don't take the diploma, one thing that is really important as a junior and senior preparing to go into college is access to your support systems and practice asking for help. Practice asking for help and getting help and going to guides and being able to set up meetings with guides and like talking to like Lindsay if you need to rather than just a teacher because that do it at Great River where you're at a very small school where it's with people who you probably have a really good established relationship with and build those muscles because that will be so important when you get to college and you're just totally on your own. So then you have that pathway traced and you're ready to ask for help when you need it. Okay, I see two hands and we're very short on time. So Jackie and Joseph, I see you, but in whatever you add, I want to say this Q&A and I'd be really interested in your perspective. Like I know you're in a really hard point of your IB diploma, so your answer is a little biased and else you might have a different perspective like being away from it. But I think it's an important question. So it is what has been your biggest challenge with your IB path? And um, a student or parent specifically wondering about the impact of mental health and wellness for like students who are frankly already feeling stress in their 10th grade year. And so can you speak to like wellness, mental health as part of the decision making and how you see that paying off in university or not and like what you've seen out of your peers? So Joseph, I think we'll start with you. Feel free to add whatever you're going to say. And if you want to speak to that question, feel free to speak to it. Oh my gosh, I have so much to say. I'm going to try to keep it rather concise. Uh, I, I mean, I, so I came into the IB diploma um, as someone who has two older brothers that were both at GRS and both took the IB diploma. Um, and I can't speak to, you know, how Ivy has helped me in college, obviously yet. Um, but I can say that for for both of them, um, college or the IB diploma was extremely helpful and like especially uh, preparing to write um, uh, like college essays. IB is extremely good at getting you to write. I am someone who is interested in writing um, and I am like so glad that uh, the IB has prepared me for that specifically with essays. One of the things that uh, Elsie mentioned this a little bit but one of the things that you do in Globo especially is timed essays where you spend like an hour and a half cranking out like a five paragraph essay we're at the point in our senior years where we can get that out in like 45 minutes. And that's a really cool thing that I've been referring for. Um, I will say one thing that um, uh, a, a big apprehension that I think a lot of people have as far as like joining the IB diploma that I remember like seeing a lot and considering a lot when I was making this decision was um, the impact that it has on your grades. I remember like one of the biggest cautions that people had was like, um, if, um, you know, if you want to get your GPA up before you apply for college, you should opt out of the IB diploma. Um, and I like when I was going to the diploma, I was like about a 3.0, I think I like average B student. Uh, and I think that um, it, I would say that like the IB diploma can really have a varying impacts on, on your grades. I know that for a lot of people like, yeah, the IB diploma can be really detrimental to your grades. But also there are a lot of people for whom, um, you know, having more work and having like uh, more more to do, um, you know, the, the type of stuff the IB diploma sort of like um, 
forces you to do is it, it really forces you to, you know, manage your time effectively, as Elsie was saying. And I would say that um, IB Diploma actually um, uh, got me to a better place grade-wise as I was applying for colleges. Um, obviously, that's different for everyone, but I will just say that. Um, as far as impact on um, mental health, I will say that was one of the areas that I really struggled with. I came into the diploma in a pretty hard time in my life. I was really struggling with a lot of anxiety issues, and um, I um, that got better through my junior year. But um, you know, that was having this um, additional burden was really hard on me. And um, I will say that it did really um, force me to you know reach out, use that support system, as Elsie was saying. Um, you know, being uh, in the IBA diploma, like that was the first time that I, I reached out to Seth. That was the first time that, um, you know, I had not really felt comfortable coming to Seth in previous years. Um, but being in the IBA diploma, I was like, I feel like I, I really just need to reach out to someone who I can talk to. Um, that was also, I got a therapist then and, you know, that was really helpful, but yeah, I will just say clarifying, that. Diploma... Seth is our school social worker for those of you who don't know Seth. And so, and Joseph, I think we hear that a lot from um, IB Diploma students who choose the IB Diploma is there tend to be students uh, oftentimes who had a very easy way through school and never had to ask for help. And you need to ask for help in the IB Diploma program because everyone hits their breaking point. It is so hard. And so learning that skill in high school, I think, is important. But like you said, Joseph, it is a really important thing to consider um, in turn, as you think about that decision, because it's, it's really hard. And so if you're not in a place where you can both prioritize school and mental health and well-being, that's certainly something to take into consideration. Joseph, we have like two minutes left. So can I go to Jackie? And then I'm going to read anything else from anyone that comes into the chat as like final things. Um, I personally, for me, I came into the IB diploma. So also, and Jackie, mainly because... like brief answer, please. Okay, I brief have answer. More yes, 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 yes. Okay. Well, um, honestly, the most challenging part for me was just kind of like the workload. I wasn't very good with my time management going into the IB. So um, it really did help with that. But I also will say my mental health, it's it's in a dubious place but like the thing is that I think with the support the thing about that diploma the best thing about the diploma is the cohort of peers that you have and everyone is super supportive of each other everyone helps out each other like we will cry with each other we will scream with each other and that is the biggest thing that like that the IB diploma has brought me is like closest with my peers <laughs> that's a really good point um I also saw uh, a few more things from you that we didn't get to in the chat, um, Anthony spoke to like IB exams being a very stressful time and like a time that like, frankly, he doubted himself. And so even though he struggled through it, he shared that uh, he feels stronger because of those coping mechanisms that uh, he was able to learn as a part of that IB exam process. Um, and then also shared that and we're, we're going to speak to this like as a um, IB or sorry, an IEP or 504 student that struggled with some time management things, those executive functioning skills, certainly we worked on an IB diploma, but Anthony's like still working on those things as a adult after Great River School. So something for folks to consider too. Panelists, you're awesome. Jackie, is that hand intentional or can I go back to my screen share? Okay, so you all can log off for the night. You're done. I have just two more things to get to families and then we'll be done for our evening. But I, of course, will stay and answer questions as needed. I have one quick little sentence. Everyone's been talking about like teacher and adult supports. Uh, juniors, talk with your seniors. I know it can big and, be big and scary. I was really scared to ask for help from seniors. Talk to your seniors. We're really excited to help. We just want to help. It's great. So look forward to hearing from the seniors again at our panel on the 29th. So I think you heard this from them, right? We heard that students choose the orange path, that non-diploma route, Ivy for all, because it allows for more freedom in scheduling, um, being able to focus on passions, greater amount of independent work time during the school day. And so those are those big things to consider as you choose to enroll in the diploma and the uh, IB for all program. Talk to people like Elise said, 
think about what are my strengths, what route's going to give me the best chance of success. Do I want to go to a really selective college or am I more looking at places with less acceptance requirements? If you're one of those students that's thinking, you know what, I really do want to set myself up for a selective college with a big scholarship, our director of college access will tell you that the IB, in her experience, the IB diploma program is the most valued at those selective universities. So it just keeps more doors open in terms of college um, access. Frequently asked questions. Do you have to take IB exams as an IB for all school? No, you will opt in or opt out of those if you don't do the diploma. All diploma students have to take their IB exams. You heard from one of our panelists, they were a 504 IEP student and we absolutely uh, encourage anyone interested to enroll in the diploma and we put those supports in place. We do wanna be transparent at Great River, the IB exams do cost money, but we work with every family and Holly Bell has done a great job of this this year, our business coordinator, to ensure that cost is not a barrier with a lot of different payment options, including full scholarship. What if I sign up for the diploma and I change my mind? Uh, our inclusion policy says, we understand the IB diploma is a marathon and all students reach their point where they're like, I'm quitting the diploma, it is so hard. So what we do in that case, just like we would cheer on or support someone finishing the 24th mile of their marathon, we bring them in with uh, the student present, their caregivers present, any GRS adults that they want there, um, and then me to just like talk about what's been challenging, what has worked really well, see if we can put some supports in place, make sure you have all the information to make an informed decision. And then the student, it's in the student's hands to make that final decision of whether to uh, continue pursuing the diploma or not. A lot of students have dropped the IB diploma because they want an opportunity to pursue greater freedom or wanting to raise their GPA for better college access. So just think of it. The IB diploma, in my perspective, is a beautiful opportunity and a great liberal arts program, but it is certainly not right for everyone. I was a two-sport athlete in high school. If I look back, as much as I'm passionate about the IB diploma and its payoffs now, I'm not sure I would have told my high school self to engage in the IB diploma because I was so passionate at that time about my volleyball career and my track and field career, and those were my things. So that's just something to uh, think about. And what is next? We're so proud of this Montessori IB program. So if you know like any upcoming 11th graders in the wider community that might want to come to like our cool, unique IB program, make sure they know it and uh, think about it. Talk to people, talk to the seniors, talk to the 11th graders, listen to the panel, make that decision and submit that IB planning form by Friday, April 5th. That concludes our IB information tonight. But I do see a lot of questions and uh, questions in the chat, so I want to make sure that I speak to those as well. I am going to uh, stop sharing my screen. Um, and hey, I got some panelists here still, so I might also use them to answer these questions. Um, so we we answered that one. So I'm gonna dismiss that. Uh, ba, 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 ba. So Elise, if you have thoughts on this, so um, a person's asking, so we hear the IB diploma is really rigorous. Can IB for all your path be just as rigorous? So I heard you talk to about more freedom. So like a little more room in your schedule. Um, but I also heard you talk about like how difficult and how much time you've put into IB art. Are, what's your perspective on uh, the rigor of the IB for all path? Well, for me at least, uh, I really put in a lot of work into mine, but I prioritize my classes based off of deadlines and just how I value that class. So, Lindsay, I don't value math as much as I value environmental that hurts science. Me. That hurts me, but I support it. So I put a lot, I put the work that needs to be done into math, but I will put a lot more work into the things I'm passionate about. 
So I think it can be really like a balance of put in the work that you want to put into things. That totally makes sense. Uh, that person also asked, and I can speak to this about um, how the different paths are recognized in college applications. Um, so college acceptance. And from my understanding of listening to our director of college access, especially at the selective universities, uh, the IB diploma is seen as like the top thing a high school student could have on their transcript, followed by like those IB courses and maybe like a student taking PSEO, followed by students who don't take like any IB advanced placement PSEO options. So kind of those three tiers is what I've heard our director of college access speak to a lot. So IB diploma opens the most doors assuming like you don't ruin your GPA as a result of taking the IB diploma, followed by advanced placement, IB, general IB courses, PSEO, followed by students who take general ed. Jackie, can you maybe speak to like the scholarship acts, uh, access you got as a result of the diploma? Um, the IB diploma has been very if anything, it has been very generous to me in what I have gotten for aid. Um, I recently got accepted to Northwestern, which is a very selective university. Um, and uh, the aid that I it was a little bit of need based aid, but I did get my some merit aid and merit scholarship opportunities as well. And I will say that the having the diploma stat status, at least the diploma candidate status, was very very helpful to um gaining that. So. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Who at GRS do you go to to help out plan your classes and make these decisions? Uh, this is coming from a current ninth grade family, and it seems like uh, the student will need to make decisions about 10th grade classes that impact IBPSEO class selections in 11 and 12. Um, from my perspective, and maybe Matt might want to chime in here, I don't know, but from my understanding, uh, if a ninth grader is following a traditional Great River School path, they will have the IB diploma open to them. And so what I mean by a traditional 10th grade Great River School path is they're taking 10th grade math, uh, 10th grade English, 10th grade social studies, 10th grade uh, science, which is either chemistry or physics, and then um, Spanish as a language acquisition course and then uh, get to fill out the rest of their schedule accordingly. And if they do that traditional 10th grade path, they are well suited to be enrolled in the IB diploma program. Joseph, do you want to speak to that question specifically or is that something? Uh, I, well, I saw the other, is this about the um, science question? No, I will oh, okay. get to that science question. I, I'll just jump in and, and say, yeah, about the only time it ever comes up is if somebody is reluctant to engage uh, in the Spanish program. Um, and often if they're interested in pursuing some other foreign language to meet the graduation requirement. And I would say like, I will have a meeting with families, whether that's eighth, ninth or 10th grade families, talk through all of the ways to meet that graduation requirement and make sure that they know that they're also kind of closing a door to really being able to be ready for the IB diploma program. So apart from that one situation, yeah, uh, most ninth and 10th graders are going to be perfectly ready to open the IB door at this point in their career. And uh, for the person out there to ask that question, they also ask what resources are available. And I would encourage you, Matt is the director of student services and knows a lot about graduation requirements. And so do folks on his team. So Matt would be a main resource. Uh, followed by their advisors always are good supports uh, about like things going on at Great River around course planning and preparing for the next steps. So those are resources I would recommend. Um, advice for current ninth graders interested in diploma, but also interested in science and possibly going to a place like Harvey Mudd. Uh, this person asks, like, could you double up with chemistry and physics in 10th grade? And the answer is yes, and you should. You should absolutely take chemistry and physics as your electives in 10th grade if you're interested in going to like the MIT or the Harvey Muds or something that uh, really values you're interested in like STEM. Definitely an option. Definitely highly encouraged. 
I actually uh, ended up doubling up my sciences in ninth grade. I did biology and chemistry and it was great and I loved it and it was really fun. So we live answered that one. Uh, diff main difference between AP and IB. Promise you there's a great slide graphic in our PDF that we'll follow up with. Main difference that I spoke to was AP is seen as a little more straightforward, a little less uh, holistic. IB is more of a liberal arts education with a lot of different components throughout, including creativity, activity, and service, and the extended essay research project. Uh, so we answered that one. And I don't see any hands of our panelists. And then one final question we have that I see in the chat is um, environmental systems and societies The IB says can count in the diploma as um, a social studies versus a science. That is absolutely true. Uh, we very much value uh, not becoming a school within the school. And we very much value at Great River, our students engaging in the social studies course of IB, which is IB Global Politics. So we see that experience more as a core of the Great River School IB program being in global politics to round out that liberal arts education. Um, happy to chat with families on a one on one basis and talk further on that if there's a motivation and reason uh, for doubling up in IB biology and IB ESS. I don't see any more questions. I think it's good night to everyone. Uh, from our alum, one more option, because seniors, you all get a second opportunity at the panel. So over to Elsie, what did we miss? Well, just know that whatever path you choose and whatever you do, you will be wonderful. And remember to, I'm telling you, I cannot stress this enough, use and access your supports while you have them and while you are young, not that I'm very old, before you go off to college and then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm on my own. Use them. I knew it will be amazing either way and talk to people about it because every single person who has done IB Earl has it. All of the seniors and juniors would love to chat with you. Absolutely. You know. We appreciate you all panelists. Thank you uh, parents for joining. Thank you, Matt, for information on PSEO and for supporting. And we'll look forward to connecting with students who have questions before their forms are due in April. Bye everyone.